Our subject is quite broad, so we're talking about international style, which could mean many things. But what I really want to talk is about these three women that I feel are very influential today, especially uh, opinion leaders in both fashion within the digital world. And um, I think it'd be a great idea now if uh, we go and introduce yourselves uh, one by one. We can start with Garance, who's sitting next to me. So uh, <laughs> nice to see you. And if you'd like to tell us a little bit about uh, your project and what it is you do, which I'm sure most people know. Um, yeah, hi. Um, I have... Um, I'm Garance and I have had the blog for about 10 years now. Wow. Um, I, so for sure one of the first, you know, like fashion blogs that really, uh, I don't know, like push the internet in that direction. And uh, now I have a book coming out soon um, and many other projects. I, I guess, you know, it start, became um, a kind of a creative studio, which mm. is what we do. Yeah, because that's interesting. You said something about blogging before, and I feel that there's been a shift recently, and people call themselves online influencers, no longer define themselves as bloggers. Uh -huh. Do you feel more comfortable? Do you feel comfortable if someone calls you a blogger today? I feel comfortable with anything. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like to define stuff in such a small way. I've always thought like blogger is it's the same thing. The, the, the important thing is communicating, and so I think... One of the words I like is a communicator. Yeah. Um, yeah. The online influencer just sounds posh, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, Stephanie Mark here, who's founder of The Coveter. Hi, uh, my name's Stephanie, and I am one of the co-founders of The Coveter. It will be turning five in January, and we really started The Coveter as a place to see inside the homes and wardrobes of different tastemakers who maybe at the time didn't get, you know, their time in the spotlight. So hairstylists, makeup artists, magazine editors, people that were really influential in putting together all of the trends that we would all, you know, then see the celebrities wearing on the red carpet. So that was, you know, one half of it really shining a light on those people. And the other half was really going a step deeper into street style and, you know, okay, Miroslava Duma looks amazing outside of the show. What does her wardrobe look like? What's her personal style philosophy? How does she, you know, really live? And how does she put her outfits together? And from that, it sort of grew um, into basically a platform that provides uh, exclusive access in you know all different ways that uh, kind of mix in with fashion and lifestyle, and it's also become an e-commerce though today as well because I've seen the development and your yeah. Website. I mean, we work with um, affiliates. I'm sure both of you guys do as well to um, make sure that almost all the content on the site is shoppable. We see that as a service that we provide to our readers. We wouldn't want to show an amazing closet and everything inside and be like, well. Good luck finding everything on your own. So, you know, we try and really curate uh, the e-commerce so that people can try and get the looks of the different closets that they're looking at. Thank you very much. And uh, we also have the beautiful Veronica Halbruna here with us Hello. from Hey Woman. And uh, you'd like to introduce yourself a little bit as well. Hello, I'm Veronica Heilbrunner. I'm the co-founder of Hey Woman. And firstly, I feel very honored to be sitting here with Gavance, you know, doing her amazing blog for 10 years. And, you know, Stephanie doing the cover for five years. So um, what we do is very young. We just launched it six months ago. So it's like, you know, still growing. We are still, you know, busy putting the team together. But basically, the original idea was my partner, Julia, coming from German Vogue. I was coming from Harper's Bazaar, always have worked in print magazines. Um, we wanted to basically have a platform where we can show our genuine style and interests in a way that reflects like us and like unfiltered and um, yeah we are working on that and plus we wanted to have it very personalized and very edited and slow not like news driven so we work with people and like every like we work from with a Kirk to a yoga teacher to a beauty editor like everybody does what they are very professional in but in their personal way and that's what we wanted to like give to the people and what we were thinking what is missing you know like in Germany to see like yeah. a very personal thing not like a 
I think that's an interesting point. You talked away, uh, you came from press and you talk about wanting something more immediate and more updated. Yes. I mean, I, I'm always fascinated by you, all of your jobs as well. And I, I do wonder if that also means sometimes working 24 seven as well, because the need for content and information is constant and or having, having to update that. How do you guys <laughs> stay on top of that? Especially when there are so many projects today happening and you know how do you constantly find this new source and you know it, it, I mean I'm interested in this so what are your tips on this <laughs> it's I think there's not really a tip it's just it's my hobby it's what I love you know it's what I'm interested in all the time and I just you know like filter that through of course I don't put everything that I'm right now interested you know for that you can use social media like Instagram that's a very good like Okay. You know, like a mood board of your ideas and what you feel and what you're interested in, in the moment. But then basically the internet is the, I mean, with the internet, you can basically travel everywhere. You can work all the time and you can, you have a very good platform to put it all out. And I think it just comes, nat I think it just comes naturally. I mean, I think for you, it's more or less the same, I guess. I think for us... Um, you know, like with owning any business, there's a lot of personal sacrifice that comes with it. So, you know, you're going to miss a lot of friends' birthdays and, you know, family events. So that's one side of it. But I think also really taking the time to build a strong team. So, I mean, I'm here right now, but we have a whole team of people who, I'm, there's nine of them. And, you know, some of them are creating content. Some of them are managing the back end. Other ones are working on our brand partnership. So it's really about taking the time to find the people who understand you and your voice and that believe in it and want to see it succeed. I think that's half the battle. And, you know, letting them have the opportunity to run with it and build up their own areas because one person can't do, you know, you can't do everything on your own. Um, yeah, I think it's a different point of view uh, for me. I don't feel like I have to cover everything. I've always uh, taken the blog for a way of talking about things I love. And uh, it's very selective in a way that's not exclusive. It's just like it's, it's a question of taste. It's also a lot about creativity, you know, I'm an illustrator, I do, so it's, it's, I don't feel like I have to be exhaustive, uh, like, in, in, you know, it, it's a very subjective point of view. How many people do you have working on your project today? Uh, we're seven. So the team's yeah. growing, and you're nine, and you're still just the two of you? <laughs> you no, we are actually three, three. Like full-time working. We have an amazing assistant who's like <laughs> holding us together. Because <laughs> I'm always on the road. Julia's like very, like very busy in the office, and our assistant is like doing basically everything. And then we have four other people like helping us constantly, like on a freelance basis. Contributing. You know, we, are still, you know, we have an office, and you know, we just started building that up. I mean, we're like way behind you <laughs> yes you know and you're in Paris now so you know while you're covering the shows and going out and meetings and social events you're there are people behind the scenes working constantly I imagine as well so one of the things that um, I love about your projects is that not only are they about fashion and music digital but they're also about empowering women because there's a lot of uh, would, I, would I be correct in saying that there's a lot of about, you know, talking about women and women's styles, but also reaching a little bit on a more personal level than just talking about what they're wearing. Yeah, I think, I mean, to me, it comes very naturally. It's like a, to me, I've always felt like I was talking to one person, like a friend. And it's also that type of conversation you're going to have that's going to go from clothes to what you ate this morning to also like your careers and anxiety and, and all that. So I've always wanted to share that in a very natural way. And it took me to do these uh, very long career interviews that really define a part of like what's the blog. And it's looking at, you know, and I think it's been really like something people give me a lot of, of feedback on because it's, it's inspired them and I guess in some way empowered them. But the message is not just like be powerful and you know like kick ass i think it's also sometimes some people want to have a more quiet life and it's also okay so i've always been careful to not just interview super powerful uh, business women but also women who just love their job that's you know more quiet maybe i don't know they're creating 
some, you know, like, and I, I think it's very important today to also give that message. Yeah. Well, I know with the cover chart, you actually go into people's homes, yeah. so <laughs> it gets uh -huh. really intimate. <laughs> it does get intimate, and it, you know, the site started, and, you know, the first few times we did it, even I was like, oh, my God, their clothes, their wardrobe, that's so amazing, but the more time we spent and the majority of people we were shooting were women, just hearing their story and being in their house and then, you know, writing the copy for it. And you really see that a lot of these women are leaders in their field and they, that's inspiring to be around that and to sort of feed off their vibes and, you know, get excited about their creativity. That, you know, I was never exposed to that before. And I think to be able to share that with our readers is great. And the other thing that I was really taken aback by is that, Everyone was just really kind. Like, that's how I met Grant and Veronica. Like, everyone was just, you know, lovely and humble and hardworking. And I think that that's a really great message, too. You know, you don't need to be a Devil Wears Prada in your heels, screaming at everyone to be successful. You can be really nice and really creative and get just as far. So I think those, that's a message that we really, you know, want to sort of give back to our readers and just... You know, the cover tours had a bit of funding. We might, you know, we're looking to grow. And just talking to other women who have had experiences of being in a boardroom with men and, you know, being looked down upon or feeling like they had to fight for something more because they were a woman, that's something that spoke to me because that's something, you know, I experienced. So moving forward, you know, really trying to empower women is, you know, something we hope to do every day. Yourself, <laughs> Veronica. <laughs> She's like, I mean, <laughs> hello. <laughs> that was very well said. I can only agree. Oh, thank you. Um, it's. I mean, we also, we of course that is also one of our parts, like introducing interesting women, and we are also especially. I mean, that is like Julia's, you know, like personal. Like she loves that very much. Like finding really interesting women that you haven't really seen somewhere yet, and give them an audience. And they don't need to be famous. They don't need to, you know, be like. So it's more interesting, like finding special women that have, you know, like something about them that is just interesting for, you know, you or you or me or, you know, like. It's. I think you can learn so much, and that's what we want. And like because we are starting from, you know, check a, a personal point of view. So it's and it's just our decision. So that is very. Um, that gives us a lot of freedom, which we enjoy a lot, you know, because we both never have worked on our own, and that is like a very, very special thing that, you know, that is like, yeah. Oh. So, I mean, how in touch would you say you are with your readers today? I mean, uh, obviously, some of you have got thousands of followers, and, you know, how do you feel that you, do you go about thinking, well, I just want to be selected to do what I do, or do you actually try and get feedback and moderate your content to meet other people's needs, or is it never about that? It's, it's always, I think, a back and forth. It's really a conversation. That's what internet brought, and blogs, and now Instagram, and like, you know, I don't know, whatever social media you're on. Is it's not just you throwing things out, and it's just like, you know, you get that feedback, but you're also your own person, and you can say, you know what? You guys might not love that, but I really believe in it, and I want to show it to you. So that's always one advice I give uh, when people ask me, well, but that picture doesn't get likes or that thing. I'm like, you know, it's a whole story. You have to tell the whole story, and just keep going with that, because I think if you only do what people want mm -hmm. or the things you only get feedback on, we're finding ourselves with like, you know, only cat photos on, on Instagram. And, and I think we have to do something that is trying to be a little bit more different and interesting yeah. and challenging. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I sometimes feel super out of touch. The girls who work in the office are very much cooler than I am. <laughs> so, I, oh, like, if I hear a song, they're like, that song came out three months ago. You're so behind. So, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I can't keep up. But I think, you know, what Garon said is true. You had a point of view. You have a point of view. And that's why people started coming to your site in the first place. So, it's important to you know, keep that and be true to it. That being said, we've also gotten a lot of valuable feedback from our readers, things like, you know, featuring more racially diverse people and 
you know, going to other parts of the world, those were things that, you know, were brought to our attention by our readers and things that, you know, we do try and pay attention to. I'm, what I always find very exciting, what is very new for me, is you know that whole Google Analytics thing, mm. where you can actually see which you know people are on your website and you know what they're doing and how often and so on and so on. That is like for me a very new world, and I don't really understand. Addictive. It. So who yeah. are so well, who are these people? I'm, <laughs> I'm not really you know I'm like just getting the numbers and yeah. I'm very interested in that, but I'm you know not professional in that field. That is yeah. also you know my partner's field. <laughs> She's very good in that. <laughs> But I find that super interesting. But you know, nevertheless, we still you know do what you know we feel is right and what we want to promote. But I mean, it's so beautiful and reassuring when actually those things where we talk about before, like you know, maybe this is not like super popular, but we are going to do it anyways, and then it works. You know, you see that it get good clicks, and that is amazing. And then also, you know, our idea that we wanted to actually reach. Um, women in our age and you know a bit above like not like super young but more okay. like you know grown up and interested in you know like maybe not what is like yeah like very edited so things. more professional and even. it actually is yeah. the fact that those are our followers and that is like amazing we were so happy about that so it's very interesting and we are very um, interested in what our readers want and do and think and so, I mean, another thing is that you all have personal profiles as well as what your content is. So, you know, you have your blogs, your online, your e-commerce, but you also have your own personal profiles. And there is a demand for you to be photographed, to attend events. Um, now there is more and more other social media such as Instagram has come in. I guess, you've, you know, these are new things that slowly have appeared uh, from Snapchat, Periscope, I mean... <laughs> I find it terrifying to stay on top of all of these things. And do you sometimes uh, find it difficult to put your image out there, separate, you know, your project and then your own personal image? Or do you moderate or, you know, how do you go about uh, handling that, what you should put out of yourself? People obviously want to know who you are, you know. Yeah, I mean, people that read me know who I am <laughs> completely because I really love to share everything. And if I could, I could, I would just talk about everything. Like we're, you know, um, so I'd, I've never had a problem sharing who I am. Um, I guess then when you get into the world of fashion, it's probably more complicated because mm. there is more expectations of perfection and things, which is the contrary of who I am. So, I mean, you know, there is always moments when you ask yeah. yourself some question, and I think this pushes you to really be even more yourself and everything. But that disconnect between my, um, the person that I put out, and it, there, it doesn't exist. I'm really 100% the same, and that's what people tell me when they meet me. They're like, oh, you're actually exactly the way you are when you write. So I don't really have that problem. But I guess you're more no, behind the scenes, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, the cover tour is really about everyone else that's on it. It's about everyone except for the be, people who write it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really great. I think it always keeps it fresh. It's kind of an out for me where, you know, even I feel pressure sometimes to, like, wear makeup every day, wear this, wear that, new clothes. And I'm basically the most behind the scenes person ever. So I couldn't really imagine what it's like for these guys. I just probably think it's a lot of, you know, pressure. But, you know, I think sometimes when people meet us, they're like, oh, we thought you were going to be, you know, stuck up or you were going to be wearing, you know, five inch Manolo Blahnik heels when we're really wearing like Nike Freeze and sweatpants. So... I don't know. I guess uh, to me, to be honest, I don't really. You don't I worry like to about go to bed early. Much. I'm like out. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, it's very interesting because again, two side thing. It's like more, you know, the, with the whole street side thing happening. That was basically one of the ideas that I could use that. Yeah. Um, moment of. I mean, like it's just amazing what's happening, and I can't really believe it myself. Like why, you know, this is so interesting. But luckily, it is. Yes. <laughs> So basically, we, you know, take that attention to, you know, us, to a product. We make something, we want yeah. to make something bigger out of it. And so Julia is a very behind-the-scenes person, and but is the brain of the operation. 
So, you know, we like, I'm happy to put out my face for what we believe in, and I feel super comfortable with it because I, you know, this is what I like, this is what I love, and this is what I want to do. And I love creating something bigger, and I love giving, you know, all the people that work with us an opportunity, you know, not an opportunity, I mean, they give me also an opportunity. Like, it's, we can, through that, we have the possibility to create something bigger that maybe, you know, will grow fast and be something one day. And that is, for that, you know, I'm very happy to be in the spotlight, you know. So no pressure. No, not at all. <laughs> well, you, you're lucky that you look great doing it, so. But um, one of the other things is a lot of people are looking to you guys for inspiration. Where do you find your inspiration? I mean, where are you sourcing out? Are you inspired by, you know, you talk about other women that you're inspired by. Well, where do you find these women? I mean, how do you come across their paths? You're always working so much. I know that you travel a lot. So um, what, is your, what are your current inspirations? Are you looking at me? Okay. Um, you're next. You're next to answer. me. I have a good answer. I have a good answer. Good, good. Um, I know you want to talk. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I told her, I, if you launch me, like, I can't stop talking. I'm just trying to. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I... I've always been inspired by other people. You can see it on my blog. I talk about them. I take photos of them. I've been inspired by traveling and, and magazines and movies and all that. But I think right now what's inspiring me the most is myself. <laughs> because you grow and you change and you get through things. And, and this is so interesting, the way you learn things and all that. And then, of course, I always look outside, but I'm also like, what's happening? It's like a little, like, you know, cosmos of things that are happening inside me. And then I want to translate them, and I want to write about them, and, and my images change with me. And I think that's one of the most interesting things. And that's the cool thing of having something for a little bit. Like, 10 years is like yeah, a exactly. long time for internet. And so those changes that are happening to me are translated also into the blog and it makes it that it's never really the same. Yeah, because you do, you do newsletters, you're still, I mean, how, what's more important for you today? Is the blog as much important or Instagram? Which are the social media that you feel is most relevant to your project today? I think the most important thing to me is not the medium, it's the message that I want to put out there and how I communicate with the people that are interested in what I do. So it's many different things. It can be the blog, it can be Instagram, um, it can be this talk. I also organize a lot of events where I can meet with my readers because I, f I believe in like real, you know, and also them meeting together, which is really a big thing for me. So I guess I've never really like, and that's why in the beginning when people like, were like, blog, 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 and I've, I'm like, yeah, it's very interesting because you can create, express yourself, but the medium is just a medium, you know? Like, it's what you put out there, the content, like, the thing you want to say that are interesting. But do you look at each other's? I mean, do you read each other's uh, yeah. projects? Oh, yeah. And uh, 100%. That? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We talk together. Yeah. And, you is know, there like never any source of competition between uh, each other? Not necessarily you three, but uh, I mean, in terms of within the industry. I mean, I know. Well, I can't speak. I, would, I think Girls has the same view that I do, where you know, this, you know, digital is so new and it's changing all the time that I think it would be crazy to not take advantage of the other people in your space and, you know, sort of see what they're going through and are, do they have similar experiences as opposed to trying to, you know, shut them out. I think, you know, it's always better to, you know, work together. There's, everyone has their own point of view, especially like our sites are so different. Our sites are so different. If we're experiencing something or we're having, you know, difficulty getting something off the ground or, you know, we're talking to a client and maybe something doesn't seem right, it's great to know that there are other people you can reach out to and get their opinion on instead of feeling like you have to go through it alone. Yeah, I you think know. it's weird. Like, I feel like competition is almost something of the past. I think right now, thanks to social media and the, the, the audience is growing so much and everything, there is so much space. There is still so much space. Like, I don't know if there is any saturation yeah. that's going to happen at any time. So people always ask that question because it's very interesting. But I think today it doesn't really make sense to be 
a competitor. There is like millions of brands, there is millions of, of people that are looking for something, and I think it's more about helping each other. And it might not come very naturally because we've always been raised in that thing where, oh, you know, those are competitors, we can't work with them. Brands are really like that. Like, you know, you're working with us, don't talk about yeah, our competitors. because brands are very comp uh, can be very competitive. Yeah. They say, well, if you're working with this brand, we won't work with you, and brands are competitive between themselves. Yeah. And I know that there are opinion leaders that are competitive within each other, because, you know, I'm working in the industry and I see that. So that's why I'm interested, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. It's nice to hear that you guys don't feel that way, and there is a lot, you know, you feel that there's a, a lot of availability and still so much space. But don't you feel like it's changing? Like even in your I mean, space, did you feel like you know? For for my, but this is open to me. I'm not supposed to be answering <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I mean, I think that there's definitely more space. And I said, I can't keep up with all the social media. So, yeah. you know, there's definitely room to, uh, to fill with because, you know, just some people are just on Periscope all day long. I mean, I didn't know how to work that. I don't know. I so, can't. you know. It's too much. Well, I think it's interesting, too, where it was a couple years ago that we realized. So, you know, if there's a platform on Condé Nast, they couldn't necessarily do a feature on someone that worked from Hearst or, you know, someone from Timing couldn't put someone from someone else. But, you know, I sort of consider this like the Switzerland. It's open and, you know, you can, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you can bring everyone and, you know, you're not limited. And I think that I try and carry that philosophy out to sort of everyone in the sphere as well. Yeah, I think, I think exactly like that. And I think there's no competition. It's more, in, I mean, you guys have been our inspiration. That's why, you know, we, you know, did that. That's why we also wanted to do that. We were like, oh my God, this is really amazing. Maybe, you know, we can also do something in that, you know, with that idea, with that original mm -hmm. idea. So, yeah, it's like, you yeah, know. And, and people always come and they're like, oh, should I do a blog? Should I do something? I'm always like, yeah, do something because I think the more we are, you know, the more, I don't know, there will be energy and excitation and, and everything. I, I don't, think you know there should be only a few people allowed to do that do you guys ever collaborate together have we this, could this be a conversation well, <laughs> well we've featured both these ladies on our site so i guess yes 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 yeah, you did take off that box it's hard to feature the coveter in itself because like there is not but like, like we should do something about yeah we should do like yeah definitely like i think it could totally I I'm would totally like, love know. to. I mean, yeah. like, then it's just like finding the right moment. Like this is almost like something like this. You know, I I want to do some talks and stuff like that. So it can like I don't know. Well, how is your what I closet? I'm really trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm I would trying. really like to. Everyone's like, just like it must be oh so God, well organized. It's a question. disaster. So how many of you really buy all these clothes and how many clothes are given? And you, I, I mean, I want some dirt. You have favorite brands. I mean, let's not talk about we all love. Every, you must have brands that you favor as well that you like to wear. And are there brands that you purchase over others? And how much do you purchase and how much is also endorsed to you that you wear? Do you work like that as well with brands? Uh, yeah, I mean, we we get sent stuff, obviously, yeah. um, and talk about it. We, I mean, I still buy. I'm never, I've never been like a huge shopping girl, so I'm kind of slow with like trends and things yeah. like that. But that's also part of my personality. Mm. Um, well, you defined your organic. style. No. It's very organic that way, and also, I mean, probably the girls can say that the same. It's like you receive a lot of stuff, but you know, it's. It's only um, like you have to edit because are these stuff stuff you would have bought? Are these stuff like are they you really? So it's it's a little bit like that, I think. Um, opposite of Garance, a big shopper. <laughs> so I was like, oh my god, we would see all these things in people's closets, and initially I was like, shopping, shopping, shopping. But you know, it's actually now sort of swung the other way for me at least because we travel so much. You know, you can't. It's like really pare it down. You don't want to be like lugging a ton of clothes everywhere you go. And I think, you know, what I've really found going into people's closets is, yes, some people do have a lot of things, but a lot of people live really edited with a really clear point of view. And that has been very helpful and probably has saved me a lot of money because, you know, you'll know. Are you going to wear it? Are you not going to wear it? Sort of finding your, at least for me, finding my own you know, voice and similar with brands too. It's, you know, so great when 
you know, people want you to endorse your product, which is really lovely, but it also has to be something that you authentically would wear. I mean, I She's obviously... She's like the street style star. No, <laughs> no, but I mean, obviously when I go to the shows and I go to the, you know, I go to the designers, the brands that I really love and I, you know, want to like, you know, show my, you know, affection and I want to also yeah, like to help. And then obviously also because I cannot, you know, buy, I mean, I buy a lot, but I cannot, you know, always buy everything. So I'm very happy, you know, when I go to an Aldo Zara show in New York, I love to wear one of his dresses, you know, because it, I, you know, that's how I can express, you know, that I really like it. And I, you know, mm. so it's like a give and take, but, you know, then I give the dress back and I'm very happy that I could have worn it one time, you know. Oh, I like that idea. It's like conscientious recycling of fashion. <laughs> so I think we're going to open up the conversation here. Correct. So um, I'm sure a lot of you have got some questions for our ladies. Does anyone want to raise their hand, ask a question? Bonjour. Bonjour. Hi. Bonjour. Um, tout à l'heure, vous parliez de compétition entre ouais. vous, éventuelle compétition entre ouais. vous. Je voulais vous demander um, vos rapports avec les magazines papier. Oui. Aujourd'hui, parce que ah. je trouve que vous, vous influencez en fait beaucoup les magazines papier maintenant. Ah, c'est gentil. Enfin, do, moi, you, je... do you understand? I'm going to translate. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, so, uh, what's, it, what's your name? So, Gigi was asking about uh, competition. Um, we were talking about competition between uh, people from the internet, but she was asking us about what about with um, the press, like the magazines that a paper print. Um, because she thinks that I, we influence um, also print magazines. Yeah. Yes, I think, of course, and I think that's also their job to be inspired by everything that's happening. Um, for a while, I think, kind of turned their back to um, online and everything, but I think it kind of evolved and now it's more, um, I don't know, it's more organic between everybody. Um, yeah, I think that's, what, what do you? I think there's a shift happening. I think there has been always like lots of magazines and now there's, you know, like the really strong titles. They, of course, you know, stay, but you know, there's also, you know, there's probably a little bit less print and there is more online, but print will always be there because who doesn't love reading a magazine? Who doesn't love putting a magazine, you know, on your, you know, on your couch, you know, table at home? I mean, it's like, they're just beautiful. It's just, they're very inspiring. I think they should be very inspiring and whereas in online you can give, you know, like real advice and you can link somewhere. Like, for example, when I read a magazine, I always have my iPhone next to it and like everything I read, I Google immediately, you know. So it's actually a very stressful experience for me sometimes <laughs> when it's about like shopping and information and all that kind of stuff. So um, I enjoy like magazines that are almost like a beautiful book, like, you know, very inspirational, like beautiful pictures. That is, I think, yeah, where, what is very strong. I guess, I guess what she's trying to understand, do you threaten, well, I guess the question was, do you threaten the press today? You know, do you pre paper press, are you threats? And I, yeah, I you I know. Think we, I think we, we do. Yeah. Um, I think, but it's just like, because the movement is happening and I personally like reading my magazines on my iPad just because of the same reason you're Me talking too. about. And also I can take screenshots and I'm gonna use the photos and, and all that. So it makes it simple. But I, I'm 40 and like my little sister and all you know kids that are 15, they don't read any paper yeah, ever, exactly. ever, ever, ever. So it's not even that we are a threat or like that there is competition. It's just that the movement is going away. And um, it's gonna be great. <laughs> uh, it's gonna shift. It's going to be everybody's gonna have a different place, but for sure there is that movement happening. But again, to me, the medium is not important. What you you know, for a magazine like Vogue or something like that, it's how they translate their spirit and their you know sense of exclusivity and their sense of beauty to anywhere. It can be on their Instagram. It can be on their. It's and it's gonna keep evolving but I think that is that's why I think it's so important to have a strong message a strong point of view because today it's Instagram tomorrow it will be something else and at some point it's really about who you are do we have any other questions here 
Hi, I have a question. Um, Hi. I just wanted to know, with so much evolution in social media and how it is with press and what all of you girls are doing, all of the designers seem to focus on the past a lot with the inspiration of their collections. When do you think that futurism will enter into the fashion world, like you see in all of the movies like Blade Runner and things like that where it's a much more uniform? Do you think that fashion will also evolve in the same way that um, social media and the press has? I think you have to answer that one, Veronica. <laughs> yeah, maybe the very pretty girl on the right can answer that. I don't know, that's a very good question. I would also like to know that, but I think fashion is very emotional and we get very emotional about, you know, looking in the past and there's so much beauty in the past. I am very, you asked before about inspiration, you know, I'm just constantly inspired by women, I don't know, in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s. So I'm very interested in, like, how you say fashion from the past, like reinvented for now. So I'm actually quite happy for, with that, what's happening right now. But of course, we should also, there should also happen something new. Um, I don't know. I think there's Stephanie? something that, that already did. I mean, it's been said many times, <laughs> you know, like Karl Lagerfeld does a collection, doesn't matter if it's for Chanel or Fendi, and he doesn't think about it again. He doesn't reference it. It's like what's in the past is in the past, and he keeps on looking forward. And I think that's, you know, there's something inspirational to be said about that. But I do, um, I do think something becoming really homogenous or uniform about fashion would really, you know, sort of take away the things that are the most special about it. So... I don't really think that, you know, that would happen, but you never know. <laughs> you to answer, <laughs> should we go to the next question? Yeah. You have a question? Everyone's feisty. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm in a little bit of a different boat than all of you. Um, so I've started my own brand. Uh, but what's interested, um, or what's been interesting for me to hear from you guys is uh, competition, um, male dominance, and speaking to an audience and having people believe in something that you are putting out there. And I really believe in what I have, but what are some tactics that you guys have used to say, this is what I have, and I'm a go-getter, and I want to show you guys that this is something that I truly believe in, and it's good for you too. So I was just at this um, beauty conference in New York and it was a lot of emerging brands and a lot of these types of questions came up. In terms of, you know, really getting their message or product out there, a lot of things that they found useful was, I'm not sure what is it? It's, uh, sorry, it's luxury bespoke. Um, so okay. it's kind of like uh, made to measure, but for women. Okay. Um, so yeah. I mean, it might be a bit different because there were products, but it was like, you know, I think one girl, you know, said over a year they'll send out like half a million samples to people. And I think, you know, it's persistence of reaching out. I think it's also trying to collaborate with other people in the same space. So like looking to people who are doing things that are similar to you and trying to find a way to do it together to amplify both audiences. Sometimes I find they ought to be effective. Um, yeah, I think one advice is probably to, you said you're on a different boat than we are. And I was explaining to a friend today that, uh, actually I was doing an interview about my book today and I was exp they were like, what do you want to do next? And how do you define yourself? And I was like, I think today I feel like we're a brand and, but not because, not in a necessarily a commercial way, but in a sense that a brand is a set of values. It's, um, you know, like it's a lifestyle. It's, it's something that, you know, defines something for people. And in that sense, as a brand, you're going to have to make content because you're going to have, you know, some social media and people to reach. You're going to have to tell a story. So we're not that far, actually, you know. And then what you sell is like, you know, the different things like we all have. So I think I would definitely think of my brand not just as like things but like what's the story you tell and it make, makes it easier to reach out to people and the right people and just to jump in for one second too it's it might look like maybe we're in a different boat but we're probably not actually exactly um so you know for instance like the cover tour 
it's, you know, the first time we went to Asia, there was like five people who knew what it was. So, you know, we had to start from scratch in a new market in terms of, you know, meeting with the right people, setting up appointments, sending out pitch decks, like exactly what we did before we even launched. So, you know, it's just, you know, that is always something that you have to work on. Okay, thank you. We have time for one more question. Who are we going to give it to? Hi, everyone. Um, just, uh, Garon Zoe, I love you. And if you were a man, I would love to marry you. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Even if she's a woman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, yeah, I have a question um, that I think is very um, important today and um, that is um, more and more updated. Updating is that... Um, we, we saw like uh, a few weeks ago um, a model with Down syndrome. Uh, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, so, yeah I yeah. saw that. And uh, I was very impressed about that, actually. And uh, I really hope that this kind of model will be more and more push, push in, uh, in the scene. And I would like to have your idea about it. And I would like to know what you think about it. Yeah. So do you mean like? Having more, like like, like different so like different ty like different body types, types different different types of. Do, do you are you talking about dis people with disabilities or different diversity? What are you talking about exactly? Because disability, I mean, Alexandra Queen did a lot of that in yeah. the past. So I mean, what do you, what what is it you're talking about? Different types of people, people with more disabilities being seen within the fashion world. Actually, with disabilities, yes, I was, yes, but uh, not only uh, diversity as well. Like, and I thought it was—I was really impressed because it's a great example. And uh, so I wanted to have your ID, not only about uh, Down syndrome, but uh, also about every kind of woman, every kind of man, uh, like uh, everyone, like <laughs> everyone. <laughs> I, I mean, you were talking about models and, um, you know, we're, it's fashion week and we are not blind and we can see that on runways, it's just very skinny, very young ladies. Um, it's difficult to um, uh, work with a lot of different types of body just because you have to fit everyone and it makes it super complicated. But I do think that you know, what people like Diane von Furstenberg have tried to do of like, I mean, to me, just like prom promoting, um, and I don't want to say healthier, because people, some people are very skinny and are very healthy, and some, you know, like, but just like probably like um, something that, that feels more natural it would, would be great, and that would be already a great start, like a little more, um, yeah, diversity, uh, but things go very slow, and I don't know, like, that's something that to me is, al is always, like, when I start Fashion Week, I'm always, like, again, like, another season of just this, like, just one version of beauty. Um, it's kind of sad. Yeah, but I think it's a great example that we can, uh, we could uh, see this woman, uh, and uh, she, it went, uh, how to say? Uh, cyber, like uh, on the internet, we can uh, we could see the picture. I think fashion has become so inclusive with social media and Instagram, and people are, you know, streaming their shows, and they have so many. The viewers have so many platforms to give their opinion that it would be unwise to think that you know fashion still speaks to only one type of people, and it would be you know, silly to think that it could only include one type of person. So I think, you know, having different types of models on the runway is really important. I think, like Garan said, it's not going to happen overnight. And I sometimes, like, I mean... But you know what's great? I think that to what you say is, like, now there are influencers that have... Like, Veronica, you're super tall, and, you know, like, the way you wear your clothes. Or there is someone like Hannah Bromfman, who's, like, super athletic. Yeah, and oh, like, it's And huge. that's who people are looking to right now. I think it's... Something it's, that's more realistic. Yeah. And that's the positive side of it. And now, you, you know, you get, I don't know, influence doesn't necessarily come from looking just one way. And I think that's the, the that's good side of all that. I, I can only agree on that. I think that's also why it shifts. I mean, years ago, magazines were full of, like, Hollywood stars, you know, when they, you know, how they dress on the red carpet, how they get their coffee, and now it's full of, you know, 
those people on the streets, you know, bloggers, influencers, all that, because they are more authentic. They are real people. There's different body types. They're small. They're tall. They're, you know, they're different ages. And I think that is very interesting. And that I think that is also why this kind of thing is so strong right now. Right. Am I allowed to continue or we have to close this conversation? We have to wrap up. Well, I want to thank you all so much. I mean, I, I have a load thank of questions. Thank so. you. Yeah. Thanks for everyone coming. And there is going to be a podcast available for you to be able to download after this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you.